Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Doc Sadler, presented by Bank Corp South. Well, last week was another great week for the Golden Eagles. A couple of uh, victories. They won uh, over the UTSA Roadrunners on Thursday night at Regreen Coliseum, and then a, a Saturday afternoon win, 77-47 over the UTEP Miners. So, great week for the Golden Eagles. And, Doc, talk first, I guess, about the, the UTSA ball game and the, the challenge with them is they've got two of the best scorers in the league in Kendall Wallace and Javon Jackson, and uh, they're tough to stop, but did a good job on them and a, and a really good win on Thursday night. No question about it. Going into the ball game, uh, you know, you're playing against two guys that were getting somewhere between 45 and 50 shots between the two of them, and at both averaging over 20 points a game, and their team has uh, really been playing well offensively and scoring a lot of points. And so uh, that's, if anything, the, the area that we've struggled with in the past. Defensively, we can play, but, uh, you know, getting enough points to beat a team like them uh, was going to always be difficult. But in that ball game, we hit, hit some shots, and, uh, again, we got fortunate. Uh, defensively, again, I thought that, uh, you know, we held them to eight or nine points below their average and held them under 40% from the field. So anytime we do that, uh, we got a chance to, to be in the basketball game. and. Then you add the fact that we did score the, ba the basketball, then that, that really helped us also. So uh, we had a lot of guys play well. And, uh, but defensively is what's uh, separating us right now from where we were at maybe a month ago. Well, it turned out to be a 78-71 Golden Eagle victory over UTSA. And then on Saturday afternoon, back home at the Coliseum to take on the, the UTEP Miners, a, a young, talented team that's been playing really good basketball here down the stretch. But, well, the Eagles played tremendous defense. You shot the lights out. You took care of the basketball. And at halftime, yeah, I think it was a 54-12 lead. So couldn't have played much better than he did in the first half. You know, it's one of the better defensive games that I've coached coached in, and uh, you got to give our players credit. As I mentioned, I think we're getting more confidence in the way I would like to defend, and that's always to take away the lane first and then worry about the perimeter shooting, uh, you know, after that, not allow any second shots and keep them off the free throw line. But obviously the key to this basketball game was the way uh, – not only do we defend it, but we, we really shot the ball. Leonard started out hitting a couple 12 to 15 footers, and then when Drain came in the ball game, he made some shots. And, you know, everybody made shots, and uh, it just it just kind of snowballed. Uh, Rodney uh, Terry, who I think has done a terrific job, there's no way I thought this would happen because, uh, you know, I was really concerned because I think, uh, you know, watching tape, they were like the second best defensive team fundamentally that, that I've seen on tape. And uh, we just made too many shots, and then they got spread out, and then we were able to get to the basket. You hate to point guys out, but, I mean, what do you have to say about Drain? I mean, what a tremendous – 15 minutes of playing time, he scores 24 points. And, you know, I mean, he made some contested three-pointers. But, man, when he gets in the, in the zone, I'm not sure there's anybody shooting that three any better than he is. Well, there's not, and he's uh, as, as I as I said before. You know, we when we went on the Florida trip, uh, the thing that's most impressive to me is he's not allowing the offensive end to affect the way he plays. He didn't make a three pointer in either one of those two ball games, and uh, he came back and uh, you know uh, continued to rebound, continued to defense, playing hard, all the things. Coach Coffee, his high school coach at Calhoun City, uh, I can't say enough good things about that guy. He is really a heck of a basketball coach and taught him well and you know his mother and him obviously supporting and it's always great to know that they're going to be here and when he's at home uh, this season he has shot the eyes out of it. Uh, he's hit some tough shots on Saturday and uh, but at the same time we got to be happy that uh, you know, right now that he's on our team. Well, it was a good win for the Golden Eagles, a good uh, weekend for the Golden Eagles. So they now get ready for bonus play, the uh, pod play in Conference USA. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the show. But coming up next, our feature segment. So sit back, enjoy this week's features, and jo Doc will join us in just a few more minutes, and we'll talk about what's coming up for the Golden Eagles. Sports I like growing up was like football and basketball, but I was more like a basketball person. You know, I like playing football. We were playing like the streets and everything, but basketball just stuck with me because I knew I wasn't going to be out there playing football, taking all those hits. So, stuck with basketball. Uh, I started developing my game in basketball like when I was young. You know, I, I had a goal at my grandmother's house when I was young. That's what I stayed with. So, everybody just come over to like the neighborhood kids. Then 
my dad was a coach, so we'd go to the gym like in middle school, shoot, then like high school, my high school coach, I was just working me out, then I just started getting better with time. Uh, my route to Southern Miss was, took the Juke route, I started out of Jim Hill in uh, Jackson, Mississippi, it's right over there by Jackson State in the West Jackson area. Then I went on to Mississippi Gulf Coast, down there in Wiggs, Mississippi. Uh, I did two years there, it was pretty fun. Then uh, coming out of high school, I had some D1 offers, but I just wanted to took the D Juco route to just see if I could find some more. Then uh, ultimately just ended up at Southern Miss. A lot of my family members went to Southern Miss before me. Like I had some sisters and some aunties that graduated from here. And so when I just, I came up here on a workout one day, then I did good in the workout then, talked to Coach Doc. And, it just stuck, cause then it was close to home as well, so it was just a good situation. What I like about Southern Miss, like we close, like we have fun on the road we're here, like we work hard together. And then all of them just treat each other like family and brothers. And then like a lot of people on this team this year, like from Mississippi, so we have a lot of people to come, you know, support us. That's family, so it's just a good environment. What we're doing in our spare time, like you said, we're chilling in the locker room or go over each other's house. Like, D'Angelo Rizzi, his house is like the spot we go to every time to just chill. But most of the guys, like, they play games like Fortnite, so they'll link up and play all day, really. Since I'm not playing as much as I want or what I would like, I just try to stay ready about this. Practicing hard every day, you know, always staying ready because, you know, no matter when you call, you don't want to get out there and mess up, then you won't be playing at all. So you got to stay focused, stay ready at all times. Uh, right now at Southern Miss, I'm studying general studies and business uh, with marketing and management. So I'm going to try to split it down into two degrees, and once I'm done, like I want to have my own business or just pursue basketball, but I always like like dogs, so I want me like a dog can as well. So I'm going to try to pursue that and make that real big. I balance my time like with my studies and ball because I like to do all my stuff like early in the week because most of the time I have like online class in like two or three classes uh, at the most in class, so I do all my work early in the week because we travel like Wednesday through Sunday, so I try to get it out the way before I have to worry about it. Putting the black and gold on means a lot to me because I'm a down south guy from Mississippi, so anything we do is just a city, like it just feels better to me because I'm from the state of Mississippi and then it just feels good. What made me want to come here was, uh, I mean, I went to Oak Grove High School right down the road, and um, I just knew that there was a great culture here. Had two former teammates that uh, came here the year before me, and uh, Kirk McCarty and Taylor Braley, and they kind of pushed me a little bit. They told me what it was like, and whenever I came on my visit, I just kind of got big-eyed and was just kind of overwhelmed with like the culture here, and uh, just wanted to stay kind of close to home because family is like the most important thing to me. So I just, that was definitely a big. Uh, big selling point. We got redshirted my freshman year. Um, I'll be the first one to tell you uh, I wasn't ready coming in. I mean, I thought I was. Uh, I had a good senior year, uh, committed here, was kind of thought I was ready, but whenever I got here, I kind of got humbled a little bit, which was the biggest uh, blessing in disguise in my life. It was a long year, but uh, through support of like my coaches, like teammates, uh, my family especially, I mean, just kind of working, just working every day. Those days where you know you're not going to play, but you just got to find a way to get a little bit better. Um, I feel like that's kind of what kind of made me grow into the guy that I am today. I mean, we're comfortable with who we are. We know we're not like one of these big, um, big programs that nationally known and like all this stuff. But our community is kind of what brings us all together and. We kind of uh, have a small, tight, close community here in uh, Hattiesburg and the uh, Southern Miss families. Like whenever we go to Biloxi to play for like the tournament, it's pretty much like a home series the whole time. And that's just kind of one thing that really stands out to me and just the culture in the locker room. Uh, it seems like every like our coach is the best at it, bringing in guys that they feel won't just help us on the field, but kind of will make us like all mesh as one, just kind of bring us all together. And I feel like that's what really on those, those dog days in the middle of the season, whenever the, the, they seem like they're uh, just kind of monotonous, going through the motions. Like it's those days where 
the chemistry really shows itself because everybody's pushing each other to get through those days where you just feel like, man, it feels like the season's never going to end or I feel like, these, like it's bad weather conditions or whatever. It's just having those guys around you pushing you all the time. And uh, it's just something special. I don't know what it is. You can't really say one thing. You can say the chemistry, but chemistry is such like a vague term. It's just something you can't really explain unless you're a part of like, on those bus trips or the flights. Uh, getting back at like three o'clock in the morning, waking up and just kind of knowing everybody's going through the same thing and having that support system around you. That's what kind of makes me enjoy playing this other man. I mean, I came here, I came straight out of high school. Um, had, some, had some rough days here on the field and had some really good days that I, I definitely don't take for granted. Um, I mean, I have a great support system through my family who comes to every single game and uh, it definitely motivates me just knowing that they've kind of rallied around Southern Miss for me and my brother and um, so that definitely puts it a lot more into perspective. It's not just about myself, I'm definitely playing for more than just uh, me. I got, a, I got a pretty long list of people that if I ever feel like I want to take a day off, I know I'd probably be letting a bunch of people down. So that kind of, as far as the black and gold goes, I mean, that's pretty much who I do it for. The guys in the locker room, like I said, the guys, like the coaches, they always pushing us, uh, strength coaches, trainers. Like, I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, it really means way more than I can put into words. So, I mean, but that's the best I can really do for that been thinking about it since I was a kid. Mom would be so proud. If I could do it for a living. Using my mom's recipes to open up a cupcake shop. For my daughter to go to vet school. Singing karaoke in all 50 states. Captain in my own shrimp boat. Tell us what you dream about. With the right loan or savings plan, we can make it a reality, no matter how crazy. That's right, thank you. Thank you very much. Keeping you within reach of what matters most. We're Bancorp South, and we're right where you are. You got me falling hard, sweet baby, you got me falling hard for you. And still, I felt this way before, you know it's true. And still, you got me more and more, oh, you got me falling hard. <laughs> My name is Abby Wilson and I am from Columbia, Tennessee and I am a redshirt freshman. I was a transfer from Carson Newman in East Tennessee. I was playing indoor there. Um, like halfway through I kind of realized maybe I wanted to play beach. Carson Newman did have a beach program but it was a really small school and I was just looking for something different. So this summer I reached out to Coach Radecki and a few other schools and I came on a visit, loved it and then I ended up here. Going from indoor to sand was definitely a difficult transition because it is so different and that's what a lot of people don't realize. Playing in the sand makes it a complete different game in itself, but also playing with two people is a lot different than playing with six. Um, there's a few rules that are different, so that's also a game changer. I think the biggest thing for me was just going from being on a hardwood floor to being in the sand. The environment in beach is a lot different than the environment in indoor, so I really like that. It's still competitive, but also fun and a little bit more laid back, so I definitely really like that. I also feel like in indoor, you are one position. You are a right side, you are a middle, you are a setter, you are a libero, but in beach, you have to do a little bit of everything. So you're gonna pass, you're gonna block, you're gonna serve, you're gonna swing, you get to do it all. So. Me, someone who likes to be in control, that's a lot more fun because I get to touch the ball every single time it comes over the net. College volleyball is definitely similar to Olympic volleyball. Obviously, we're not competing in swimsuits and like little things like that, but I would say like other than um, the competitive level, it's very similar. The game is played the same way. The rules are pretty much the same, so. 
A lot goes into determining partners. I know that Coach put a lot of time and thought into who was going to be playing with who. Um, we played challenge matches, so everyone played everyone. And so we kind of determined, okay, who plays well with each other. And then we also took personality tests to see whose personalities went well together, who brought out the best in each other and things like that. So honestly, a lot goes into it. So Olivia and I were the only two beach-only girls here last semester. We started training in August and we trained all the way until we left for Christmas break. So we were conditioning in the sand, we were lifting, we had practice, we competed in a play day in Gulf Shores. So that was kind of what our training looked like last semester. And then we got back from break here and we pretty much just jumped into it. We started conditioning, lifting, practicing every day. We've been doing challenge matches where we're playing against each other just to kind of see who's going to be with who and our rankings and things like that. So a lot has definitely gone into the preparation for sure. I feel like because we haven't had a beach program yet, no one really knows what to expect. So they might kind of think the environment is similar to indoor. So I think coming to a beach match where everyone's talking and laughing and there's music playing in the background while we're playing volleyball, I think just the environment, you would walk away and be like, wow, that was really fun. And I also think that you guys would be super impressed with where we are being a first year program. Well, outstanding weekend, uh, this, this opening weekend that we just had against a very strong Big Ten opponent, uh, Purdue, who I think is going to win a lot of games in their league. Honestly, they've uh, only been outside twice before coming to, to play us this, this past weekend. So, you know, a great opponent, a regional team last year, and certainly one that, that builds our schedule moving forward as, as we move into this season. But great crowds, great atmosphere, over 11,000 people for opening weekend. Probably the second largest opening weekend crowd behind Mississippi State last year. But I thought that we really competed well, uh, all three games from start to finish. You know, we gave up the, the lead. We found ourselves behind in all three games, but we stayed the course. We stayed the plan. We didn't panic. Uh, we continued to do what we what we needed to do to, to win baseball games. And really, I think that starts with our, our pitching staff, hanging those zeros after after giving up some innings there where, where they scored some runs and, and able for our offense, who at times I feel like can be very dangerous and, and give us a chance to win. So, uh, you know, we've got things we have to improve on. We'll address them today at practice as, as we move forward uh, into, into our schedule. So, uh, but overall, very pleased. Starting pitching was pretty pretty good. You know, Walker and Stevie, I think, competed uh, well, particularly Stevie on, on Saturday. Uh, but, you know, and then on Sunday, who was supposed to be Matt Walner, we had to make an adjustment because of his strain a little bit in that forearm to Jared Wright. Got his feet wet there. Uh, certainly the next time that he sees a mound, he'll take the experience from Sunday and, and move forward with it. But I was really proud of our bullpen and how they came in and stepped up and really controlled the damage. We only few, threw a few guys. Uh, but, you know, we felt like those were the guys that we needed to throw to win. Uh, certainly as we get deeper in the season, we'll, we'll be using more guys. But overall, I thought our guys did a, a, an excellent job giving, giving us a chance to win, letting us play defense and uh, letting that offense click. Well, I think our lineup can be very dangerous at times, especially in the middle of that order. And e even from the, the, uh, the top, with starting off with Gabe, you know, that's, that's kind of a murder's row in all honesty. They're all lefties, you know, to start with, but certainly Matt Walner gets a lot of the attention, but, you know, I think this, this past weekend you saw Hunter Slater really step up in his senior year, uh, much like we uh, had thought he would and, and wanted him to develop. So, you know, Matt Guidry, you know, big walk-off uh, RBI hit there in the 10th on Friday. Uh, certainly is no surprise to me. I mean, he's certainly the guy that you want in that situation. But Walner, a big day on Sunday with five RBIs, a home run there in the first inning, and then a big two, two RBI uh, hit uh, on, on Sunday there late in the game that really gave us a huge momentum swing. So 
Uh, I like our lineup. We returned some, some veterans there, at least five guys that had a lot of experience in, in the lineup last year. Uh, and then we've, uh, we've surrounded them with some new guys and some guys that have been in the system uh, to, uh, to, to help as well. So uh, very pleased with how we, how we went about it this weekend. We return the trip to Mississippi State uh, this weekend. Uh, it's an all-important series. Uh, certainly the media is going to blow it up really, really big, but Mississippi State happens to be the opponent in state rivalry. You know, everybody knows we, we swept them at the house last year, so I'm sure they're not going to be sitting there at the gates with cakes and, and fruits and vegetables for us as we walk in as nice little tokens. But, you know, what a great atmosphere it will be for college baseball in the state of Mississippi between two really, really traditionally strong teams. And we're back on Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Doc Sadler, presented by Bank Corp South. Well, the Eagles have played 14 conference games, and uh, right now, number three in the Conference USA standings, third place. But we'll talk about that in a minute. But, Doc, our feature, one of the features this week was on senior guard Anthony Penny Hampton, who was a guy that came to the Golden Eagles out of, I guess, Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. And, you know, he's played a little bit, not a lot. I'm sure he's not played as much as he would like. But when he plays, he brings a lot of energy out on the court for the Golden Eagles. There's no question about it. You know, Penny deserves to play a lot. But the thing about Penny, uh, he has uh, he has each and every day came out and practiced as hard as he can practice. And that's hard to do when you're a senior. And, uh you know, I haven't got him as much playing times as, like you said, I'm sure he'd want, but uh, he hasn't, a lot like Drain, he hasn't let that affect how he shows up to work every day. And that's just great to have a senior like that, that uh, the young kids can see that, you know, they've got a lot of playing time left in their career, but Penny doesn't, but he hasn't let it affect him. And so I'm very happy with that, and uh, he has been a contributor in a lot of different ways, but uh, most importantly, uh, he has been an unbelievable teammate, and that's what uh, you know. That's what this team needs. All right. Before we talk and, and show who are the Eagles will play in this bonus round, this pod play, uh, talk about uh, from what what this is supposed to do. I guess the the, the, the theory behind it is that it uh, gives the top teams in the league a chance to play each other and maybe improve their uh, chances of getting into postseason play, at least on paper. I guess that's what it's supposed to do. Well, to be honest with you, I'm not for sure uh, anybody really knows. I think this league has made a decision based on, uh, you know, some people uh, selling, selling something. But my, my, my deal is, you know, uh, if it was all that, then everybody would be doing it. And uh, but that's the way the league is. And to me, though, it's hard to be at the most important time of your season and not knowing what's going on. And that's, that's the fact that, you know, when we finish playing on Saturday, we just sit around. Do you give your kids off days? Do you not give them off days? And uh, you really don't know what's going on. And, 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 and that's hard to plan for. Now that we know, you know, that all the teams are in, the, in our pod and who we're going to be playing and where we're going, now we can schedule it, but uh, it hasn't been, in my opinion, one of the better decisions that uh, this league's made. But at the same time, uh, we're part of it, and uh, we'll make the best of it. And uh, you know, we got four games left, and we'll play uh, we'll play Western Kentucky, Old Dominion, UAB, and uh, and San Antonio. Those are the four teams we're going to play. Oh. And. Uh, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. Well, look on the screen. We'll see the Eagles, and you have to go. I guess you could. You got to go to number one and number two. So that's uh, 
uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky for Western Kentucky and in Norfolk, Virginia to take Old Dominion. Very tough to beat up there. San Antonio's got to come back uh, to Hattiesburg. They were they were just here, you know, last week. And then uh, also you get the other team, uh, UAB, who you were able to beat here earlier in the year. So uh, four tough ones, but particularly those uh, those first two to go on the road to have to play number one and number two, Western Kentucky and Old Dominion. Well, again, you know, John, here's the thing. Uh, I don't know much about the NBA and the draft picks and, 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 and throwing games and things like that, but uh, sometimes the fifth fifth place team uh, might have might have had a better yeah. place. You know, we tied for second, but got the third seed, uh, so we get a chance to go the first two teams. And 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 all you're trying to do is be in that first four. And uh, we've got a work cut out for to us the to, first, to get us by to get us by in the first round. And we've got a work cut out for us. Uh, you know, we do get the two games at home against UAB and and San Antonio, but. In some ways, uh, you know, maybe that's an advantage. I don't know. But I do know this. we got to go to Old Dominion, and we got to go to Western Kentucky. And those two places, besides Marshall, is probably the toughest place to get to. And it basically takes up a whole day. So, uh, you know, looking at the schedule as the fans have looked on it, uh, we've looked at it. We're really, uh, you know, we know we got a work cut out for us as far as the travel's concerned. And uh, we'll just make the best of it and hopefully uh, – you know, be playing, uh, continue to be playing good basketball. All right, well, congratulations on a great week, and uh, we'll see you next week. Hey, thank you, John. All right, the Golden Eagles head off to a Conference USA bonus play, pod play. The Golden Eagles in that number one pod, the top five teams right now in the Conference USA standings. Don't forget, we're at walk-ons for the Golden Eagle hotline every Monday. Come on by, visit with us. We'll talk a little Golden Eagle basketball. That'll do it this week. Have a great week, everybody. See you next time. Another inside look into Southern Miss basketball. Hey Southern Miss fans, it's Toby Barker, Mayor of Hattiesburg. Mickey Spagnola once wrote, if you're going to war and you get to choose first, choose Southern Mississippi. Always choose Southern Mississippi. Don't fight Southern Mississippi because no matter how hard you fight, those folks will fight harder. His words capture the character of our institution and our city. We here in Hattiesburg are writing a new story, one where we rise to our challenges with great excitement, one where we push our city to reach its potential, and most importantly, one where there is real partnership between the University of Southern Mississippi and the city of Hattiesburg. Southern Miss is vital to our city's success, from the quality of life it provides through athletics and the arts to the talent it cultivates in the classroom. We share a common destiny. Hattiesburg is proud to be Mississippi's college city, and we hope as we go forward, you'll join us in supporting our Golden Eagles this season as they go to the top.